See, men have failed from the very beginning. From the very beginning, men have failed. Adam failed. Failed to love Eve. If he had loved Eve, he would look. If he if he loved God and loved the truth. See, he was close to God, so he should have had awareness. If he wanted to have the awareness and didn't get fixated by the idea of greatness, of knowledge, doing it his own way, then he would have seen all the way to the end. He would have seen what would have happened, what was in store. See, that they call that vision. They say leaders should have vision. They say my people perish for a lack of vision. We need vision, don't we? Do we have vision? How about our leaders? Do they have vision? No, they don't for the most part. But if he had had vision, he would have seen all the way, like looking far off to the horizon. He would have seen what, what was in store if he ate of that tree of knowledge, which Father had told him not to. See, And then he would have seen how it would have harmed Eve, how his failure would have tempted her to judge him, how it would get them booted out of paradise, how they would both suffer for it. And progeny would suffer. See, he would have seen that and then he wouldn't have touched it. But he didn't see it because that's not what state of mind he was in right there. His state of mind is he was lost in thinking, fantasy, thinking about how great he could be with knowledge. See? Which today, but anyway, so you get the idea. And ever since then, men have failed. See, a man should be God-centered. Most men are women-centered. Somehow a woman See, Adam failed to the woman. Her words, f her food, okay, her presence, he, fa he, he fell to it. And ever since then, he, men have been, you could say, subject to women, women-oriented. Women are their God. See, women, you know, they worship women, and, and we have Mother's Day, and so on. Everybody's worshiping. See, mom is worshiped. Women are worshiped. Men um, men always want something from her, see. Now, what do they want from, what, what does a man want from the woman? Does he love the woman? No, he doesn't. What, he, what does he, he wants something from her. He wants her to support his ego, to support his animal nature, his, the, the sexual nature to which he fell when he failed. See, he, Adam and Eve could have lived forever, perpetually renewed, and lived forever. But, when he f failed, he began to change, and no longer could he live forever. His body was dying. And when, he, when his body began to die, then thoughts came and, and urges came to procreate, to create replacement bodies, so that when he passed away, then there would be uh, children and grandchildren and so on to replace, to, to replace him, see? So it's been that way ever since. Ever since um, the, the Garden of Eden, people have failed and died and had to procreate. So that's what he wants. He doesn't want to know the truth about his fallen condition. He wants her to validate his animal, to make him feel, to, to pretend. See, women, women sometimes have to hold their nose because of what men want from them, demand from them. Yeah, men demand from them. So the woman has to hold her nose and pretend, see, that she's worshiping him, worshiping him, see, admiring him. She pretends, but inside she has contempt for the animal, for the snivel, and for the sniveling, weak mama's boy that comes crawling to her. Whenever things go wrong out in the world, then he comes crawling to her to validate and approve of him, feel sorry for him, and comfort him. And all that kind of stuff, see? So he makes her into his God. So she is the God of his fallen nature, his failing nature. But a man should be God-oriented, see? He, if he would be validated by anyone, it would be for, for, from the Creator, from the Creator within. Now the Creator within, God, see, would not validate his, his contemptuous behavior. See, a lot of men are liars. See? Uh, they slip their wedding ring into their pocket, or they don't even wear one, or they slip it into their pocket. If there's a interesting lady around, hey? 
or they go to the office and play footsies, go out and have coffee with someone. See, they're always tempting fate. Men are always tempting fate. See, they, they, what do you call that? The life of excitement. Driving a little too fast, playing sports a little too hard, drinking a little too much. See, always tempting fate. See, men are, men are actually, de men are also death oriented. Everywhere you look. It's like men are, it's like, it looks like men are deliberately trying to fail and get themselves messed up. Okay? To them, that's excitement. See, failure is excitement. Danger is exciting. Ga look at men gambling. Gambling is what? It's the opposite of faith. See, a man of faith would, would never, a man of faith would, ne would never spend a, a penny on a lottery ticket. See? Or gamble. He just wouldn't. He's not interested in the laws of chance, and he's met, he lives according to fate and looks to God. Okay. Uh, a man, a man of faith, or a man who's close to God, who loves reality, who loves truth, who has nothing to deny. See, what do you think? What do you think people drink for? They drink to deny. They eat. To, people work to deny. Din sex to deny. Eat to deny. You see, take drugs to deny. What are they denying? Well, they're denying the truth about their own fallen self. They're denying their disgusting pride. See, they're denying um, a lot of other things, too. So, therefore, now you can see men fail. They look, they look to the woman to support them. See, and it, when, if she doesn't support him anymore, if she stops supporting him, then what? He'll go off and find another woman. Somebody, he'll find somebody's lower. See, he'll keep sinking lower and lower because the lower he sinks, the lower he, someone has to sink, sink to pretend to worship him and admire him and respect him. See? So men go off to prostitutes and, and surrogate, uh, see, women. They go off to uh, bartenders and drug dealers and someone else that will coddle them and help them to deny the truth and tell them that they're okay. The bartender says, oh, you're okay the way you are, and hands them another drink, instead of giving him a dose of truth, see. So, um, so what we need is truth, first of all. That's what you need is the truth. But it, and then don't resent it when you hear the truth. For, because most people don't want the truth, but some people do, and especially young people. They like the truth. They love to hear the truth. See? So you men with your families, okay, maybe at least what you can do is this. Don't lie to them. Okay? And don't, a don't ask them to respect you when you're not respectable. Okay? And um, um, honor the truth. If your child is there, and your child asks you a question, and then you, and then you're watching football, and you say, "Oh, leave me alone! I'm trying to watch football." And then you you see that you're impatient. You're impatient, selfish. Then admit it. Say, "I'm sorry. I was selfish and impatient. I apologize." Be man enough to admit the truth, okay? And stop lying. And if you don't know the truth, and just admit that you don't know the truth, and don't put on airs and pretense, see? And and for the time being, maybe don't try to meddle in everybody's lives, and don't go around pointing everything out because uh, you're you're not respectable. First, you have to become respectable. How can you become respectable? The truth is respectable. We honored, see. People respect. Someone, look. How about these situations where someone is captured, like, uh, for example, um, uh, just uh, I'm just make something uh, talk about any old thing. Uh, like, for example, in in uh, the, the Vietnam War, some of the men were captured uh, and were held um, prisoner. Like, uh, for example, uh, Vice Admiral James Stockdale was held prisoner in in what they called the Hanoi Hilton. He was in solitary confinement. For, actually, for years total. But you know what? He was honorable, and they respected him. 
He put up a great fight. It was, it was tough. There's no question about it. But they respected him. And the ones that, that, tr that, uh, that, that tried to make friends with the enemy and, and tried to um, and conformed and went along with the enemy right away, thinking that that way they could buy their own safety or be, get better treatment or something like that, uh, they didn't end up so good. And they were not, and they weren't, res and they weren't respected either. So you speak the truth, and uh, at least you'll be respected. But speak it with with kindness, see, for, you know, without vacillation, without wavering. Just this plain and simple truth. That's all. If somebody asks you what time it is, just tell them it's two o'clock. See. Just be honest. It just in it just be an honest person and don't embellish things and don't and don't look for a response from other people don't expect them to like you or think you're wonderful or respect you or anything just speak the truth the truth is respectable if you honor the truth see then to the extent that you honor truth and are and are honest yourself to that extent you are somewhat respectable so don't look for love. See, be a respectable person, and then if you love the truth, see, what, what it, and begin to see the truth about yourself, then you're going to clean up your act too. If you honor the truth, and you're you're drinking, you're smoking, you're smoking marijuana, you're playing the lottery, you're gambling, you're wasting money on, you're you're the the, the husband, and you're wasting money on jewelry for yourself. See, some little pretentious doubles to to hang on your ear or on your nose or something it's it's uh, who could respect you for that no one okay you just be respectable be be uh, honest okay and that's a that's a good start and then clean and clean up your act okay clean up your act throw away your marijuana cigarettes and throw away your lottery tickets and See, and put sports back where it belongs at the very, very bottom. See, especially spectator sports. See, your first priority should be work, work, and uh, living a decent life, being there for your family, honoring truth, standing for something. Okay and uh, making repairs and whatever else. But then if there's any time left over, which there really oughtn't to be, but if there is a little bit of time left over, well then maybe, but then maybe you, sh you should then use that to go for a walk or to write something or to help somebody. Not to sit around staring at uh, some other men playing a game. It's a waste of time. So put things in the proper order. If you and if you can't, if you can't clean up your act, you can't throw away your marijuana cigarettes, you can't stop with your sports addiction, you can't stop playing the lottery. Okay, then just continue. Then, but just see that you're messing up. See it. At least admit it to yourself. Don't look for support from other people. Just admit it to yourself. And then say, you know, God, I'm messing up. I can't change myself. Okay, I'm just messing up, and I'm going to keep messing up until until you change me okay and then uh, on continue with your life and maybe the good Lord will will help you out okay my name is Roland